Hello, my name is Allison Meeker Wilson, and I'm here today with the Huron Historical Society and the Huron Public Library. And today is Saturday, April 11th, 2009. I will be interviewing my father, Dr. Gordon Meeker, for the Huron Oral History Project. Hello, Dad. That's, Hello. Um, <laughs> this is Gordon Meeker, and um, he is a descendant of Aaron Wright Meeker, who owned property on the east side of town along the lake that eventually became Old Homestead and Chasco. And I guess one of the things that I've always known that was important to you growing up was that you had a lot of memories of school, and you always had favorite teachers and principals. And I was going to ask you um, just to tell me about going to school in Huron. Where did you go to elementary school? Well, there, <clears throat> there was only one elementary school. And there was only one school altogether. And that was on this property that we're sitting on? Yes. <laughs> was it two buildings, one building? This, well, this was first grade. Where I'm sitting now is the first grade. And so you went to first grade here? Yeah, right. Did you go to first grade before or after you had scarlet fever? Well, I, I started school and got scarlet fever while I, the first couple of days in school. And so, so when you had the scarlet fever, you were quarantined and you had to leave? Quarantined, yeah. So you ended up coming back and doing first grade again? Right. right. Okay. <clears throat> um, do you have any memories of any particular teachers from your younger years or a principal? Well, we had a Miss Carter, a woman who was about ready to retire. They used to come in from Sandusky on the streetcar every day. She went back and forth to Sandusky. And she, I don't think she ever drove. So that was going back and forth along Cleveland Road there was all she saw. And so would you have her for more than one year? Like would you have the same oh, teacher no, we, many we years? Oh, no, we had just one teacher. Okay. There was, uh, if you had a problem with learning, there was another teacher, but I, I never got involved. How about the fact that... Um, you were left-handed. Was that a problem for the teacher? Well, they made it a problem. It wasn't a problem for me, but you had to, you had to get permission to uh, continue on. To stay left-handed, I had to get permission from the county superintendent. Okay, because I know your friend Yvonne Slaker, she ended up being she had to, she did become, Switch. um, she switched. And the reason you didn't have to switch is because of the scarlet fever and some after effects of it. it well, it, it I created don't know what the reason issues. would be. They just allowed me to go ahead. Right. How about any principles that you remember? Was there a Mr. McCormick you used to talk about? Well, that was high school. Oh, that was high, high school. school. Well, he was ahead of the schools. There was a Mr. Wiggly. When I first started, there was a Mr. Wiggly. He lived up in a house not far from here. And um, he was married to one of the Fry, Fry girls. So you didn't really have a superintendent because the school system was so small. What was a graduating class size? Well, we, we had 30. You had 30? 30, 30, yeah. And you graduated in 1943? 43. But you didn't actually get to graduate with your class? No. In uh, 1942, I went in the service and was gone for four, four full years. And so how were you awarded a diploma? Did you come back to a ceremony, or was it mailed to your mom while you were? Well, now there's, now you, Take, we have a, we have a, our class has reunions, and there are people there that I don't think. Uh, so they're included in the class, they're included but they may in not the class, have ever. But I don't know if they ever graduated. So was the diploma 
just given to your mom? Or was, did they wait for you to come back to give you the diploma? Well, now, to explain, I had, I had gone to, I had, wait, am I right? No, now I got to figure this out. Oh, that was in Germany. That was in. Uh, I'm thinking the college now. Okay. Um, we're going to take a little break to adjust your microphone, and we'll come right back. Another question that I'm puzzled about is: you you actually grew up in Milan Township, but you attended Huron schools. Was that the norm, or did it have to do with transportation? Well, a series of various things. I don't know if we ever got real uh, go ahead to go to here in the school or not. But uh, the school my mother went to was right there at Shide Road, and that was a division between Huron and Milan school districts. And that was just a few yards from your house. Right, right. Okay. And then do you think transportation, like how you could get to school, played into it also? Well, uh, my father drove the school bus, and in 2027, 20, he was going to pick up kids. And going across to crossing at the Huron Street there, and going into Huron, he was hit by a train in snow and snowy weather. Were there crossing guards at the train tracks back yes. then? Yes, yes, there okay. were. But it was bad weather yeah. and still not clear. Right, right. Describe to me what you mean by well, a Well, it was snowing. What do you mean by a bus? Are you just talking a large car? Or right, they... right. It was probably something like a a big Buick or something that had jump, they had jump seats that you pull out. Well, my, my father owned the car, so he drove his own car, and he just pulled these seats up out of the floor. For, well, we only had to carry about seven people during that time. Now you mentioned, you, your family had one of the first cars ever bought from Door Chevrolet. And you took 1920, that... 1927. And you took a... Is that the car you took to the World's Fair in World's Chicago? World's Fair in Chicago in 33. Did, was it a fully enclosed car when you drove all the oh, way yeah. to Chicago? In fact, is as far as cars, the way cars look, it was as good a looking car as there is today. Right. How many days would it take you to get to Chicago from here on? Oh, everything was done in one day. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, what, 300 miles. You can go a long ways. And Well, we got up at like maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and got in the car and started for Chicago. And how many adults we had? Went? We had uh, uh, relatives in Chicago. Was there only one adult in the car? Or did Grandma well, have a my, companion? Well, my sister would have been, well, she, well, yes, there was only one of them. Because to me, it was a really big deal for a, a woman, a mom, to be hauling her kids to Chicago and there wasn't an, a man in the car. So it just seemed like a big deal. Now, when I remember the, about the time when you got um, scarlet fever when you were little, there's a picture of you standing on a humongous boulder in Huron River? Is that where that's no, at? No, that was, that was down along the beach, I think. So there were very large boulders? Right, right. Because this was mammoth. Right. Would you, when you say down along the beach, Wait, there was no, a- Wait, no, I'm sorry, that, okay. was a, that was a Huron River. Okay. That was a Huron River. Were there large boulders? Is that what Camp Boulder right. got its name from? It was unique. It was kind of a unique river in the sense that I thought it was one of the few rivers that had these large boulders like that in the world I'm talking about. Probably had something to do with the glaciers. Right. 
Another big memory you always tell people about, especially when we go um, to the invention restaurant, is that you met Edison when you were a young boy. You met you. I met Edison, Edison and Henry Ford. And that was in the Village Square in my. Well, own. we knew they were coming, and I set the third step up on the present uh, modern uh, library, and saw Edison and Ford come along the invention there, the restaurant. And then your mom was best friends with his niece, which was Homer Page's mm -hmm. wife or daughter? Homer Page's daughter? Homer's, well, it'd be daughter, daughter, mm -hmm. yeah. And they used to ride into Huron on horses? The ho they, yeah, they were horseback. It was about three, three miles on horseback to school and away back from school every day. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was in the 60s, when I was born, I remember the uh, 69 flood. Do you recall a lot about the 69 flood? How did it affect our family? Do you recall the cottages being covered oh, yes, all the way to yes, the top? Yes. Along the Huron not, River? Not to the top, but they were up, well, maybe a foot. They, the water was running right through the cottages, yes. And we were on the Huron River. Right. And then we lost a boat. And the story I remember, Grandpa, um, Grandpa Batch used to say that he found parts of our boat along the beach in Old Homestead that had come up the river, but he never wanted to tell you. Well, I don't. And besides that, we'd already claimed insurance on it. Um, did you invest at all in urban renewal? Were you interested in having a business during urban renewal in downtown Huron? Not in Huron. Oh, no? No, I, I went to Sandusky right away. I didn't know if you had an investment there. Another interesting story you told me was um, about the inventor Hoover, that when he, he um, was in town, what he brought to this area in terms of... Now, you're talking the Hoover, Hoover in uh, Cant, Canton, Ohio. No, the Hoover, the potato no. digger that was made. No, I didn't know that guy at all. Okay, but you say that he brought Electricity, because of him, you got electricity or gas? Well, there was house. gas. There was, he had a new plant. It's where the Schlesman plant is now. He had a new plant, and he brought uh, natural gas to his plant. And then when that closed, oh, I don't know if it was open very long. It wasn't open very long. It wasn't open very long, and they had the gas that they had no use for, I mean, uh, they said. So they asked the people along our road uh, if we wanted gas. So the gas ran right to the foot of the hill at the farmhouse. And that currently is Route 13, but it used to be called 299? Uh, 299, yep, right. I have one last question to ask you. And that is, could you tell me something about this? What, what do you have there? Well, this is a turtle shell. Uh, well, um, Ham Stowe, who lived right across the road, uh, found, found this turtle. And the turtle had the initials. Now, now I got to read. Yeah, I actually have it. It says 1904 on the turtle shell, with the initials of um, mm -hmm. a cool boy. Yeah, Albert Cool. Albert and cool. Ralph Rose Kelly. And Ralph Rose Kelly, of which your mom was a my Rose my Kelly. My mother was a brother. So they put initials in it, and they re-released the turtle, yeah. and. You got the turtle back. In 1940. In 1940. So you put your initials and I in it. I put my initials on it. And you used your dental tools to put your initials in it. You re-released the turtle, 
And 40 years later, we got the turtle back after um, it was found with all these initials on it. Right, right. And so you thought it was really important, so you mounted it and displayed it in your house. Well, that's some time later I did this. And of course, to make it so that you could read it with a, easily, I, I made it so I could turn it upside down. And the other thing you used to display in the house when I was little was the arrowheads. There was a lot of arrowheads. Yeah, there were a lot of arrowheads. Well, you could go back toward the Huron River there and just sit down under a tree and maybe play around in the dirt a little bit, and you would find uh, bits and pieces of arrowheads. Well, well thanks, Dad, okay. for sharing your stories. <laughs>